that. Okay. Okay. You're welcome. Yeah. Huh. Am I here? Hey. <laughs> Did I say your name correctly? Is, is, is it Brichetti? Brichetti is very good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I know, so I'm sorry about your guest. It looked like your guest was going to talk about Java Swing. And I do a great deal with that. At least I did back when it was um, more popular. It's a, desk, it's a way to make a, uh, a desktop application uh, okay. written in Java for cross-platform. So Mac, Linux, Windows. Mm -hmm. And so I would be happy to um, talk about Swing or show Swing. Yeah, on the chance that your scheduled guest will arrive in the next few minutes. I can help you fill in is what I'm offering. Hey, I, I appreciate it. I, you know, I was going to start doing a, a concert in a second. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Brandon wants to install Swing. And I'll tell you that a nice way to get familiar with Swing without having to install anything, and this is not an advertisement, there's a website called Repl.it, R-E-P-L dot I-T. And you can go there and you can create a new Java Swing, they call it a, a REPL, like a project, and uh, run it right there in the browser. So that's one way to go. Can you spell that again? Yeah, R-E-P, oh, here, let me type it in the chat. Oh, hey, that works. Repl it. And um, the one problem with it is they require age 13 and above. So you have to think about that when working with the kids. But um, it's a great way to um, work with different languages. And it also has a multi-user feature. So I teach uh, privately. So I have a few private students at a time. We're all remote now, of course. Mm -hmm. And um, they can get in and share a program with me, and so we can all work on it together. Okay, Brandon, how can I help you more? Swing is just part of Java, I do believe, unless in later versions they uh, removed it. But you think you have it. Okay, good. Um, I can show you. Let's see. I have a Swing program around somewhere. We could develop one together. I could show how to develop one on uh, on Replit. Okay. Is anyone still here? Is it true there are 20 people here watching uh, 20, us riff? 21. <laughs> <laughs> is this helping you at all, Sababu? Oh, thank you. Yes, yes, it is. Okay, thank good. <laughs> um, let's see if I can make a new Java Swing Repl and I can share that. Can I share just a um, tab in a browser? Yes, you can. Okay. Well, let's have a go at that. Um, so just click on the computer monitor at the bottom of the screen. Okay. And it should give so you a choice. And looking for it to say new tab. I wonder if it's that one. I want to be sure. Okay. So uh, put that tab in focus and then choose and maybe that'll help. Here we go. No. Put that one in focus and then choose. Well, I tell you what, let me just have a look around, make sure the okay. desktop is uh, safe here. Um, I could share the whole thing, but no, I was gonna say, well, we're 21 people in here. We are of drinking age. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> well, it is recorded though. <laughs> right. <So, laughs> Got to think about that. So let's just have a go. Let's try and see if this is opening up the right one. No, that's us okay. right here. So that's the wrong one. There's a blank one. Okay, that's not it. There it is. That's interesting. It doesn't show when it, um, well, who cares about that? Here we go. <laughs> so... <laughs> This is Repl.it, and again, it's for people just joining, I'm not the speaker. I'm, I'm helping Sababu just 
uh, productively pass the time <laughs> while he waits for the regular speaker to attend who got delayed on some official business. And I appreciate that. You bet. So uh, I noticed that the talk seemed to be about Java and Swing, which is one way to make a desktop application with Java. And I'm just showing that you can install Java and install tools to do programming in Java, or you can do it in a, in a browser. And one of the ways to do that is with this website, REPL, R-E-P-L dot I-T. Jennifer says she would love a demonstration. Okay, good. Here it comes. Um, so I'll say I want to make a new REPL, and I find the version of Java here with Swing. So here it is. You see that? Java Swing. Is it free to sign up? Yes, and it's pretty, pretty convenient just to... Um, log in with a Google account, and then you don't even have to create anything. And if it asks some questions, you don't even have to answer them. Um, people should know that unless you pay them, your work that you put there is publicly visible. And then it uh, proposes a name for it, and I'm just going to call this temp1 because I'm going to delete it later. Yeah, I wonder how many temps I have. Let's go to 15. And if people want to um, join me in this, I can make, oh, I see, I'm going to have to write the whole thing uh, from scratch, or let's see, let's see. I think there's an example of a, yeah, so this will do. You see what I did? I just clicked on the invitation to have a sample. Okay. And then it gave me this code. And so this is going to be a Java Swing application. Now, if anybody wants to join me here, I will click on share and then copy this link. And I'll paste it in the chat. And so I see that we haven't heard back from your presenter yet. Simple GUI projects. So I'll do my best to um, make good use of our time. So uh, let's see if anybody well, joins me there. Well. And okay, so I should be able to run this and then something should pop up because there's code in here. It looks like there's a button that you can click. So let's see what uh, comes up here. So Becky joined me. Welcome in there, Becky. And here is a, uh, and so the thing is this Swing program is not running on my desktop. It's running on Repolit's servers. So I don't know if you can see that, but there's a button there that I can click. And someone's pushing the button. I'll bet you it's Becky. <laughs> Becky down there. Becky's got all the text selected. I'm glad. Go for it, Becky. Have a good time. So let me give Becky, oh, there are other people in here too. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now that we have a bunch of people in here, we have to have agree on some uh, rules here so <laughs> we don't have chaos. Oh, Becky says it wasn't me. <laughs> um, so one thing I would suggest is if somebody, and I think you should claim the task in the chat. Uh, so your challenge is to change the button. So instead of saying, click me, it says something else like, you know, assign grade or whatever you're thinking for the project. Okay, so uh, just uh, write in the chat that you're claiming that task, and then you can change the code. It's pretty easy. It's line 10. There's, there's somebody and if no one will it. take the, oh, uh, here goes some, but Ruth, you're supposed to claim the task so we don't have chaos. I'll, Okay, Ruth, we give it to you. <laughs> she took it by force. <laughs> All right, so now we're running again, and then the button says chaos. Oh, Becky already maybe is a swing programmer. Oh, and look, it says chaos. Okay, so now I just think we need to have some chaos when we push the button. So let's see what that button actually does. Okay. Um, okay. Also, hi, uh, Leanne, is that how it's pronounced? Yes, hi, hi, Sababu. 
Um, I uh, just wanted to give a quick update. I think that we could probably expect that Cody is going to be running very, very late. But I see that you all have created your own unconference session. I'm loving it. <laughs> I'm loving it. Uh, I would like to be able to post on the main uh, chat, the event chat, that you're still, you know, discussing. What is it that you're discussing? So I can post it. Java Swing. Java Swing. So if anybody would like to join, I'm going to invite them to come and join this session on a quick discussion demo on Java Swing. Does that sound OK? Sure. So, okay. No pressure, Mr. Uh, Bracetti. This okay. is not what I was expecting to do today, but that's fine. And maybe you can take turns, you know, maybe um, uh, demoing or showing different, uh, you know, high school resources. Maybe that yeah, would we've be got a great a, way. Kind of a plan here. I'm showing how several of us together can work on a program and um, all be in the same space working on it. Well, and also... I yeah. understand the goal is just to teach a little bit about Java Swing, so I want to I want to try to help and fill in with that if I can too. Okay, well that sounds great. I'll go ahead and post it on the uh, main chat event uh, event chat. Sorry, and uh, invite folks to come in and participate. Okay, thank right. you. I didn't. Even I really appreciate it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> know. We're just making the session right now. <laughs> Good. And I'm glad to be with, with you, Sababu, because uh, I've been in a couple of your sessions and you're just a, a warm and nice person. So it's good to be in the space with you. Oh, oh thank you. <laughs> That's, um, your okay, your so, head's just exploding now, Sababu. <laughs> uh, let, me, let me just go through it. And I don't know about the audience, if they know about Java. This is a Java program. And... Java programs have certain pieces that are expected. For instance, there's a class that contains code and there's a main method that contains code. Um, JFrame is the main window that appears. So like if you run your browser, that appears in a window on the screen, that would be, that would correspond to a JFrame in Java. Mm -hmm. And then a J button. And most of these swing components start with a J. So J frame, J button makes a button and set bounds sets the size of the button. And then Ruth is copying the code. <laughs> it shows, I don't know if you see the name of the little, the little cursor that ran by there selecting the code. Yeah, Ruth, that's a, that's a good idea. Uh, anybody wants to just copy that code, you can make little changes to it. And then this action listener business uh, defines what happens when the button is pushed. So instead of saying hello world, I think the way we left it was there was a button that invites you to uh, produce chaos. Right. So I think we just have to put something um, chaotic in here. I don't know exactly what that would be, but uh, let's start with this. Say, look out, boom. Look out, look, oh, boom, all right. So, Bobby, why don't you get in here and put the boom in? Are you in? Okay. Uh, I believe so. Yeah, get in there. There, he is in. There you go. All right, good. Uh, so, you do the honors, Sababu, so pushing run. And then I, I don't know if we all have to push run separately. If I'll okay. see it, there's a little green button at the top with run. Uh, okay, sorry, it was a message over top. Now my window is just black. Oh, oh run. Okay, never gonna... mind. I see. Okay, I pushed it, so we'll see. And um, when do we finish, just for planning? Oh, okay. So the session is over at 2.30. Um, so 2, 1, 12, uh, 2.30. Okay. okay. So it's showing up with the button saying chaos. So can you, if you push it, will we all see what it? What the result is, why don't you go ahead and push it? And then we should see down in the console, the little white on black window at the bottom, it says, look out, boom. Right, the last line. Yeah. Okay, so let's see what else we could do. Someone, as a little experiment, could change the size of the button. Um, so who wants to claim that? That's on line 13. 
The first two numbers are the X and Y coordinates from the top left. And the second two numbers are the width and the height. Mm. So who wants to come in there and uh, do that? And while we're, while that's so, happening. So is it the height that comes first? It's um, X, it's Y, width, right. height. Good. There's somebody doing it. Oh, I got you. Someone was in there. Good. So th this code, the sample code for swing that REPL gives you is not really modern or, or especially good. Um, but a lot of people trained with Java, especially maybe the, the APCS courses, don't learn the newer features of Java. Um, they may even be back pre-Java 8, and now it's on like uh, 14. So, um, okay, so let me see. So question, the gray part, it looks gray on my computer. Is that the J-frame area or is the black part the J-frame area? Oh, um, well, let's set, let, uh, in a second, I'm going to show you in a different environment, um, a better Java Swing program, but I do want to answer that. So let's look at... Um, what it is that's setting the size of that J-frame. So I'm looking for F. So there it is on line 26. That's what sets the size of the, the J-frame. So someone should probably um, make that a lot smaller because it really is just holding a button. And really with when you use Java Swing, you wouldn't explicitly position things the way this is doing, and you wouldn't explicitly size things. You would, if you need to, you would set a preferred size and then just allow a layout manager to lay everything out. Okay. Um, okay, so people are working there and I'm going to share something else, which is also Java Swing, but it's in a, with a better tool. So let me see if I can, um, and I think I'll need to share the whole desktop for that and I probably better lower the screen resolution. I don't want to overwhelm. So let's just go to 1920. <laughs> okay, so back to the browser where you are. And I'm going to change the sharing to the whole screen. Allow that. And then I'm going to switch to this. So can you see mostly black and some white code on it in brown? Yes, sir. Okay, great. Um, this is a tool. And again, I'm not aff affiliated with any of these companies. Um, JetBrains makes a lot of good products for language development, including Java. And this is called IntelliJ IDEA. And this is what I used to do, swing applications. So this is a this would be a more modern um, way to do kind of what we've done. You see there's a J frame in here, and then there's a J button, and it says push me for a greeting. And if you push the button, then it um, gives you a message. So let me run this, and it should pop up on the desktop. And I'm running on a Mac. So it should appear as a native Mac desktop application. So let's see what we get. It takes a minute to compile it. What's the name of the IDE again? Oh, this is called, let me put that in the in the chat here. So this is, the company is JetBrains, and the product is IntelliJ IDEA. And um, I'm a professional software developer, have been for years, also a teacher, computer science. And um, a lot of the professionals I know use IDEA. And again, it's just a personal recommendation. I'm not compensated or anything. Okay, IntelliJ IDEA. Um, so here's the little program. Hello, graphical user interface. Uh, let me put it on the backdrop of uh, this. Uh, so notice now that the that the J frame is sized appropriately for uh, the button, and I didn't explicitly set the size. And if I say push me for a greeting, 
then the little message appears, hello, graphical user interface. So we can look at um, how that works. And I don't, I didn't see a, an outline of the scheduled presenters talk. So I, 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 I can't match those objectives really. Mm. Um, and I don't know if people would be interested in having an explanation of this code. So maybe I better just jump back to the chat here and see how um, I might be able to benefit people who are here. So are there any questions about uh, using Java Swing or JetBrains or IDEs or other resources um, that you all would need um, if you're teaching the Java language or AP Computer Science A or what have you, you can place them in the chat. That'd be good. And um, has IntelliJ overtaken Eclipse as a Java IDE? Good question. Um, I don't. I only have anecdotal evidence which says yes. Um, I don't have any uh, objective uh, measures. But um, yeah, I've used Eclipse and I've used NetBeans. Um, these JetBrains products are are really good. <laughs> Some of you are thinking, hey, this is a JetBrains guy. <laughs> But no, you know, like somebody who works for them, uh, a shill, I guess is the word. But um, no, it, they just have a great suite of tools and um, students can use them for free. Uh, full-time educators can use them for free. Sadly, since I'm not a full-time educator, I, I pay for them, but um, I don't mind. Uh, something else I could do if people here lose interest in um, Java is I could, I've been learning uh, Unity with my students, which is the 3D graphical kind of game making thing right. with the C sharp language. And that's just amazing. I'm having a great time. So if people get bored with this and want to see Unity, um, we can do that. Okay, so let's see what people have written here. Uh, most popular development environment. So Brandon, can you summarize that for us? What did you get out of that? And then, uh, oh, Ruth would, would love an explanation of the code. So since that seems to be in line with the scheduled objectives, as I understand them, um, why don't we do that? Oh, it looks like IntelliJ is about twice as popular as Eclipse. The nice thing is that you can do a lot with the keyboard. You can get really good with a keyboard. So you don't have to use the, the mouse. And I think studies have shown from cognitive psychologists that the, there's a big cognitive load associated with um, operating the mouse. Whereas if you can just do it with the keyboard, that's much easier. So um, if you um, learn the, to be efficient with the keyboard in IntelliJ IDEA, which is this, and then you switch to using their product for C Sharp development, Rider, then all of this stuff that you've learned is just in your muscle memory just transfers. Okay, there was a question there. It was about um, Java libraries for forms. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, PyCharm also is from JetBrains. And if you if you have the uh, JetBrains IntelliJ IDEA Ultimate Edition, um, it includes what PyCharm has. So I used to use PyCharm for Python programming, um, but now those features are just in the Python plugin in IntelliJ. Okay, the Java library for forms, uh, I don't know. And I and I should tell people that I, I don't think Swing is all that widely used these days. And Java FX, perhaps, is a more modern way to go. So Leonardo, I don't know about that. Leonardo just wrote in Java FX. Uh, and is there a more user friendly version of AWT? Well, AWT is a layer underneath Swing. I think it stands for Abstract Windowing Toolkit. And that came out early in Java, like in the mid to late 90s, I'm thinking. Uh, yeah, AWT is really old. So AWT and Swing's built on that and Java FX, um, I haven't used it much, but if I were to do GUI development with Java, I would definitely look at that. As far as what would be most relevant for the students, I would say, you know, um, maybe some web-based stuff instead of a desktop application. 
Uh, yeah, Kevin, I, I was a swing expert for a long time. And then gradually, uh, I started to get less and less respect for those uh, credentials as people shifted to browser based um, applications. Wow. Java FX. I don't know whether it's um, needs to be installed separately. It was a big swing, meaning what like it went up and down. Okay, I think it was Ruth wanted to see the code. And we have what, like a half an hour? Uh, yes, sir. I'm really Am I doing 30, okay? 30, 39 Mr. minutes. Bobby? You're doing well. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, we have about 39 minutes left. Go for it. Oh, I just make sure because I have a student at, at noon Pacific time, so I'm all right. Oh. Um, okay. And we're, we're doing, um, um, we're doing, um, C sharp and uh, unity. Okay. So here is my program. So this is, this is what I would consider more modern code. Uh, I think this is running in Java 11 and the stuff from Repolit, I think it was in running in Java eight, but um, okay. So uh, just going through the package sets up a space for the code. So it's like a namespace. And then we're using Swing and AWT features, so we're importing things. And then this class is called Hello GUI, and I named it that because it's like a Hello World program, but with a graphical user interface. And uh, all Java programs to start need to have a main method that looks like this, public static void main, and then this array of strings arguments. And then this creates the JFrame. And um, this var is new in Java 11. So it uses type inference. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to say JFrame, JFrame equals new JFrame. Uh, the compiler figures out that this is, a, that this is gonna produce a JFrame. And then this is the message that goes in the title bar. Um, just to have it running, let's have a look at it again. So there is the title bar. Hello, graphical user interface. Oh, I just realized that when I push it for the greeting, it produces the exact same message that's up in the title. Well, that's okay. Um, and then set default close operation means that the program will, will quit when I close the window rather than keeping running. And so, Baba, just please interrupt me if anything happens in the chat that, that should affect what I'm doing. Okay. Uh, set location relative to null, puts it in the center. And then um, we create a panel, which is an area inside the JFrame. And we give it a border layout. And a border layout works like uh, it has a center and a north, south, east, and west portion. So if you put things where you want them, then the layout manager places them uh, in a, according to match your, your wishes. And then here's uh, creating the new J button. And here's creating an empty label. And then I wanted the message to be centered. Here's the message again, it's, it's centered because I do this. And then I set the preferred size for the message because um, if you don't set the preferred size, it, uh, the layout manager will notice that the string is now empty and it'll make it uh, really small. I'll show you what happens if I don't do that. So let me comment that out and uh, rerun. It's coming. Okay, and one of the things, you know, I guess um, in between time, um, you can talk about your experience as a developer. Oh, sure, I'd be happy to. Um, and now, now that I'm here, just, let's see what's happened in the chat. If Java FX is better, we can switch over that. I think that would probably be recommended, but uh, but don't take it from me because I've been out of swing in Java FX for a while. Comparisons, yeah. So let me come back to these. I, I'm pretty much done with this walkthrough of the code, or nearly done uh, for Ruth and others. Um, so take a look at what happens if you don't reserve space for that label. See, there's no space for that label to appear, so you can't see it. So that's why I set a preferred size. Normally I like to avoid numbers, 
like this and have things just figured out. But um, that's the best I could come up with. Then I mentioned the border layout. It has a center part, which is a big place in the center. And then there's south and north. So I'm putting the message in the center and I'm putting the button in the south. And then if you remember the Repolit program from before, it had some kind of ugly, look at all this code to deal with the um, action for the button. So that's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six lines of code. That's like pre, uh, I forget which version of Java allowed us to now do this instead, all in one line. I add an action listener and say that when an action is performed, then we'll set the text of the message to this. Okay, almost done. Then we set the content pane in the panel. Uh, sorry, we set the we set the panel that we've made as the content pane for the J frame. So I'm just running it again so I can point to that. So the J frame is the thing on the outside. The content pane is everything inside. The content pane has a layout manager, which is a border layout. And in the south part of the border layout, I have the button. And in, it, in the center part of the border layout, I have the text. Pack makes the layout manager arrange everything. It's really nice because if I added another button or um, added other components, it would be it would be sized right. And then um, frame set visible true makes the thing show. OK, so that's the little demo of a hello GUI swing program. And now let's go back and see what people would like to talk about. So um, comparisons between C++ and Java. I learned recently that um, Microsoft is not, is no longer encouraging, maybe someone can find a link to this, uh, use of C++ anymore because it's, uh, it's a dangerous language and it's been involved in a lot of their security um, issues. So instead they're recommending Rust for a low level uh, kind of system programming language. Um, C++ and Java comparisons. I'm not really prepared to do that. Um, I'm not, a, I use C++ for a long time. I've written hundreds of thousands of lines of code in it. Um, but I much prefer Java. And I'm not even a fan of Java really. I like uh, Scala instead. And um, they're, there are other languages besides Java that run on the in the Java environment. One of them is Scala. Um, can I talk about my job as a developer too? Let me just do this because um, I don't want to make it so much about me unless that would be useful to people. Um, I'll just put my website here, or it's I think I made a profile here. But if you, there's a lot about me, and I have a YouTube channel and. Um, so if people are interested, uh, I'm also accepting new private students. Okay. There's my plug. That'll be all of that. <laughs> that'll be, <laughs> that's the, that'll be all of the self-promotion. Um, the IDE I use is NetBeans. Yeah. When I was doing swing stuff, I used NetBeans because NetBeans had a tool built into uh, where you didn't have to hand write the code to make the GUI. And I think, uh, idea has that as well. I wish I was teaching APA. It was still taught in C++ when I took it. So Brandon maybe prefers C++ to Java, it sounds like, which I have no quarrel with. I've lived long enough to avoid quarrels about languages. Uh, yeah, can't help with Java FX. Yeah, Ms. Laura Gray, uh, appreciate you posting um, a link in the chat about uh, Java FX, where they can go and download and get more information. Oh, it's not included in JDK 11. Yes, good to know. Uh, if and when the, oh, for AP, is it gonna switch from Java to maybe Python? Yeah, I have no idea. But there was a guy in yesterday. Uh, so Bobby, were you with, with, with uh, Professor Owen? I was. He would know about that. He gave his email address. He invited people to contact him. Um, okay, so there's a link to JavaFX. And it has, uh, Owen Astrakhan, Duke University. You're going to put that in there, I bet. Well, I'm trying to find <laughs> I got to go back. To, oh, uh, 
I, I sent him an email, just said hello, and he wrote right back. He was very nice. Offered to help. Um, you mentioned Unity. Thought that you use it there. It's, Leonardo, you suggesting a connection between Unity and Java FX? Maybe I'm misunderstanding. What the notion of programming coaching? How were you mentored in the? How were you mentored in the private sector? What the notion of programming coaching? Um, I'm trying to understand that. And why is this scrolling on its own? Am I getting way far behind in these messages? It's scrolling because more people are adding to the chat. I see. Uh, Leonardo, I'm not sure what you're asking. I, I uh, program, I write code for clients, um, doing Ruby and Java at the moment. And uh, I teach programming to kids in lots of different languages. How, how were you mentored in the private sector? Um, I wasn't so much, I'm a lot self-taught, but working on working in teams, I'm sure I've learned things from others. Okay, Laura, CSA differences. Java uses interfaces for multiple inheritance. C++ allowed multiple. Members are level pointers. Yeah, I think going from C++ to Java was, a, was definitely a good thing. Uh, oh, Kevin says, if you try to import an IntelliJ, it'll ask and download it for you too. Ah, good. So it sounds like IntelliJ uh, uh, idea will do a good job for uh, helping people use Java FX. Love of pointers with sarcasm. You know, uh, Laura, I, I um, been involved in computing for a long time and I remember really low level stuff and I've programmed an assembly language on different uh, hardware and I kind of miss pointers and the low level stuff and registers and all that, but uh, I am more productive now. There are not enough people like Dave that are experts in the private sector that make a transition to the public sector. In what's WI? WI. Wisconsin. I'm in California. Not sure what WI means. I think, yeah, I think that stands for the state. Um. Yeah, I I love teaching. I love programming. I'm glad I've been able to blend the two, and I do think that's. A benefit um, and a, an appeal to having um, to me as a teacher. Uh, Unity and C plus plus. Unity, I think, used to work with um, with Python and C sharp. And I'm not a Unity expert. I'm just learning it. Um, but I know that it, that I use it uh, with C sharp. Oh, Unreal uses C plus plus. Not enough programming coaches for teachers. Hmm. Oh, and here's a, oh, a professor. He didn't want us to call him Professor Astra Khan. Astra Khan. Astra Khan. He wanted to be. Yeah, he said Owen. Owen. Just call him Owen. Just call him Owen. And Laura made her students code in vi uh, Visual uh, Visual Basic uh, applications this year, so they could understand when clients ask for programs and themselves to say no. <laughs> um, I should show you a picture of, of all the things I've taught my students over the years because I taught Visual Basic for a while and it was it was great. It was a lot of fun. Um, okay, so I've caught up with the chats. It's 11.04. What else um, I could show? Oh, I, well, I could show Unity, but the, it's been advertised as being Java Swing, so don't know whether we have the freedom to uh, deviate. Do you get students in teams to replicate Agile framework? Agile, um, so Agile, that's like the stand-up meetings and the points for the difficulty of tasks and things like that. Um, in my professional career, I've only worked in two, two contracts where we did that. And um, so I haven't done anything like that with my students. And at the moment, I, my students are mostly working individually on things. And Laura has done agile development in a math class for standard mastery. Kevin uses waterfall. Are you kidding, Kevin? I, th I think Kevin's, what do they say in England? Y yanking our chain or something, winding us up. Waterfall is what agile is supposed to replace. Challenge to get students to understand working in teams from my experience. 
don't go chasing waterfalls. I don't know why I'm reading, reading the chat out loud. <laughs> Does anybody want to see what I'm doing in Unity? I'm, I'm loving this. <laughs> go for it. Okay. Um, all right. I'm going to launch the Unity Hub, which is a way that you manage your projects. You look like Uncle Bob. Uncle Bob, the um, sometimes disparaged um, programmer educator. Uncle Bob. <laughs> forget his last name. Let me turn, let me turn my mic off. <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's making you laugh? <laughs> Thank you. Am I cracking you up or the, the no, chat? I, they, they need to do some CS stand up. Uh, Laura Gray and Kevin here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah he's he's the agile guy um okay so i'm going to show you my droppy bounce project and um oh you know i can't hook up my playstation controller because i've used up all my usb ports for the camera and the external mic but i'll make it work with the mouse these do any of you use a tool to monitor and block outgoing um, network connections um, on the Mac, I'm using Little Snitch. And um, I'm of the view that if you're using a program, it doesn't have to phone home to the vendor every time you run it. Um, it's just not necessary. Occasionally, maybe you want to check and see if there's an update. That's great. But it doesn't have to phone home. So I usually block it. Okay, um, let me run this. You can just see what it does. So I'll do maximize on play and I'll play it. And I'm doing it with a mouse. Normally I use it with the PlayStation controller. So here's the idea. Um, a ball appears and hovers and then three tenths of a second later, uh, I turn on gravity so the ball falls. And then I have to react and tilt this platform here the right way so that the ball falls on the platform matching the color. And I think you're probably getting the idea. And if it hits, if it hits the platform, it just disappears. Uh, otherwise, it bounces off. I mean, uh, it just uh, falls off into the void or bounces off a different platform. Um, okay, so let's look at the code for that. And um, to do that, I'm going to edit these scripts. So I have a controller script. So what's going to happen now is Unity is going to launch Rider because Rider is the JetBrains tool that a lot of people use for C Sharp. And the trouble is I, I applied for a free license for Rider because I'm using it strictly for education. But since I'm not doing it um, full time, they haven't given me my um, license yet. So you're going to see this. So I'm not trying to cheat anybody. I'm hoping I'm going to get the free license. Otherwise, I, I probably will pay the 140 bucks a year or whatever for Rider in addition to whatever I'm paying for for IntelliJ IDEA. Okay, so Rider is going to run and it's going to show us that script. Looking at the time, we've got 10 minutes. And um, I'll just show you maybe how the... Um, Balls get generated. I'll make this a little bigger so you can see it. Just going to pop over to the chat for a second, see if there's anything I need to see. Brandon likes this. Now talking about Agile and the waterfall. Kevin was serious about the waterfall. Okay. I accept that. I don't challenge you. Um, okay. So. The, there's a there's a method called start and there's a method called update and in start um, that get call that gets called once and so that's where you do things that you're going to do once and here's where I create those four targets of the different colors and then in the update method I think I could probably make this bigger still here this is where when the time is right which is what this means when the time now is after the scheduled time for the next ball drop, then we, oh, I, I don't know if we noticed the targets shrink each time. And then I reset the um, platform 
pitch and roll so you don't have to put it back to level. And then this instantiates a ball, which, it, which just creates it in the world. And then I get the material from it. And then I set the color uh, randomly. And then I get the rigid body for the ball um, so that in three tenths of a second, I can turn gravity on so that it will fall. Okay, so I think I'll let that be the quick uh, demo of uh, what I'm doing with some students in Unity. Another thing we're doing is making uh, dominoes. So you, you see, you'll see that when you have the power of a loop, you can instantiate hundreds of objects. So imagine not having to manually set up dominoes on your floor, but be able to just write a program to make a thousand dominoes all lined up like in a straight line or a circle. Um, yesterday with a student, we had uh, a 10 by 10, so we had 10 columns of, of 10 dominoes, and then we made this gigantic uh, sphere that rolled into them and then made them all fall. It was kind of fun. Wow. Okay, so I should kind of wind down and let's see if there's administrative stuff that's going on here. So, yeah, just to chime in for a second, for those that are still here, because we still have about 20 in the session, we appreciate you uh, sticking with us. Um, please make sure, if you haven't done so already, that you fill out or complete the attendance form for the session. It is pinned at the top. If you took any screenshots or pictures or anything like that and you're posting to social media, hashtag Constellations Summit. Uh, we appreciate that as well and appreciate you attending. And if you have any questions, we still have a few minutes for the session if you want to stick around. Um, you can go ahead and ask Mr. Dave Brachetti. Yeah, I think he's done a wonderful job. So I, I, I really do appreciate you. You, you kind of saved my life, you know. <laughs> I, didn't I was going to start singing for him for real. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to leave you hanging. I saw you there. <laughs> so thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. Okay, any other questions? Uh, for Mr. Pre now I'm getting tongue tongue Pre <laughs> Mr. Pre Mr. B, uh, I I invite my students to call me Dave. Uh, but if their parents prefer, uh, you know, you're from most of you folks are in the the southern eastern U.S. Is that right? I find you folks to be very very polite. Here in California, we're a little bit uh, looser. I think. Okay. Uh, how? How, how does one get started running coding camps or how, how did I, how do you get started running coding camps? Um, I'm not sure. And I'm not that great at marketing and um, that kind of thing. So I don't know. Sagar, I'm going to try to pronounce this. Homayun Pura. That was very useful. Thank you. And thank you to people who are thanking me. I'm in uh, Lafayette, California which is uh, east of San Francisco, east of Oakland, west of Walnut Creek. And first name would be a no-no no -no in the <laughs> south. Yeah, yeah. Um, and really, I'm from Philadelphia. So, you know, I was just raised that you call people Mr. and Miss, you know, ma'am, sir, and everything. So I, I, even in my adulthood, I, I still do that. And I tell my children, you know, if, if people are in a leadership position over you, it doesn't matter what their age is, you give them that respect. So I might have a 16 year old that's leading in class. I'm going to call him Mr. Whatever his last name is. Uh -huh. I remember. Um, so I for, for uh, quite a while, I taught at a program for kids in grades four through 10 at a community college not far from here. Um, and for a long time, I just had the kids call me Dave and then. Um, I spent some time volunteering in a middle school music department where the teacher was very formal and polite and everybody was Mr. and so on. So I thought, well, I'll try meet, being Mr. Brichetti for a year. And then I had teaching assistants and, um, and they usually went by their first names, but I invited them to, to go by Mr. So-and-so. And one of them was just thrilled, you know, like this 16, 17 year old boy. He was thrilled that the, the kids, the, the students who weren't that much younger than he would be calling him Mr. 
Okay, no. so there was something, there was a bit of a conversation. Sorry, I thought on your site it said you did that. Leanne has arrived to say something. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, just received uh, communications from Cody. I pinned a link that he sent me to his uh, presentation. And um, he also indicates he feels very, very badly for not being able to presents today. Uh, it was a, an emergency meeting that he was um, pulled into at the AP reading. You know how everybody's doing that um, these days now. At any rate, he also says he's going to do a recording either later today or tomorrow and we'll send out a link to that. And if you completed the attendance form, uh, Sababu will be able to email you that link. Um, if you've completed the attendance form, he'll have that information and send you the link as soon as we get that. Uh, again, he apologizes for not being able to present. It was entirely unexpected. And because he is, I believe, a like a question leader, he didn't have a say so. And this only happens when, you know, like an emergency or something important is, uh, occurs. So apologies and, uh, thanks Dave for stepping in and <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know taking over here i uh, am quite impressed and um you know i really appreciate you doing this it seems like folks are uh enjoying it and um getting a lot out of it so many thanks to you dave for You're doing welcome. this keep me in mind right. for future conferences because i enjoy absolutely well, we have your contact information now, so <laughs> uh, we'll absolutely stay connected. Thank you very much. You I'll bet. leave you to it. Cheers. Okay. All right. So, you know, you don't have to go all the way to 2.30 if you want to give them like a little, you know, break uh, after that. Oh, now. it's all the way to 2.30. Ah. Yes. So um, it's 2.18 now. Um, unless people just wanted to hang around and they still have more questions, you know, I'll stay on until 2.30, definitely. Um, but once again, you know, we can't thank you enough. Uh, we really do appreciate you for doing this. I'll go back and answer a question. I was having a conversation with Brandon Murray um, about creating a coding camp. Um, I'll, t I'll tell you what I'm involved in. Um, for years, I've had private students. So the students just come to the house and um, we work together and do programming. And we've done a bunch of languages over the years, C, C++, Java, Python, uh, sometimes assembly, um, Ruby, um, and a variety of different programming areas, networking, games, graphics and stuff, JavaScript. Um, and for years, I, I mentioned a program I taught in at uh, Diablo Valley College in Pleasant Hill, California. And um, I might try to find that, that blog post to just to show the things I've taught over the years because that was kind of interesting. Last summer, um, I got connected with the Athenian School in Danville, which is a private school and they have a summer program. And um, I taught programming there. Let me, um, let's see, Athenian here. So just not so that you would enroll, because I think it's full. Um, but if you want to see what this class is like, this is this is somewhat representative of the kinds of things that I teach. Um, so kind of an introduction to programming. I, call, I think I call it a programming sampler. And then a Python text adventure game. And then um, Sonic Pi. Do any of you use Sonic Pi with Ruby? to make, um, to have your programs make music. Yeah, I know we and, use AirSketch and JavaScript. Say again, please. Oh, no, I was saying like, um, one of the things to try to get students interested is using that music uh, perspective. And we use AirSketch with that, Ear you know, yes. It, hmm. But it, it uses JavaScript, but you can also program in Python. Uh huh. The Sonic Pi guy, um, whose name escapes me for the moment, is an educator and a performer, and he does these live 
um, performances. Uh, you can look on YouTube, Sonic Pi live performances, I suppose. Aaron is his first name. Um, so people dance to it. He makes this music come out and he changes the code while he's, while people are dancing to the music and um, the code sort of evolves during the performance and he has the code showing on a big screen behind him. It's a, it's a really wild thing. So we're not going to, probably not going to do any dancing in that class this summer at the Athenian school, but um, we're going to have the music. Um, and then I've, I've been teaching for a couple of years in a, um, a private school, St. Perpetua school here in California. And they're, they're, they're very formal and there's a Mr. Brichetti definitely um, to that. And I think that covers the, my teaching venues. So as far as how to start one, uh, if that was the question, I, I really don't know. A lot of these opportunities have just come to me through um, people I know. Kevin's co-worker used Sonic Pi a few years back. Sam Aaron is the guy. Dr. Sam Aaron is the guy who made it. Super cool stuff. Yeah, it really is. Let's see if there are any other conversation fragments we should continue with. Wow, well, this 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 has been awesome. You know, I saw some of the comments about you know this, what you were going over has been very useful to uh, the participants. So. I'm glad. I, w without having an outline of the original plan, I don't know how well I was able to fill in, but I, I'm actually quite surprised that very few people left. I mean, we had 22 at one point. And there are 20 in here now, if I'm reading it right, 3 slash 20, or the 20 next uh, what, to the I. Is the one next to the I. Uh, um, Brandon Murray, what assembly programming have you done? You still with us, Brandon? A systems class, like a systems programming class, and was it for... PCs. Oh, oh, x86. Yeah, yeah. Um, I used Microsoft products. They had a debugger called CodeView, and this was for C programming, maybe C++. And um, so you run through your program, you interactively debug it, so you, you can pause it. And um, you can expand, and, and NASM, is that the same as MASM? NASM? And you could expand the C, the C language statement into the assembly instructions that are compiled from it. And then you see the displays of all the registers and memory. So you can see the effect at the, at the low level. I mean, like just above the transistors, sort of. There's all, it seems like there's always another level in between, but a very low level, you could see what's going on. Um, I had a friend once who had some very expensive debugger that could go backwards in time. I need to, um, I think I can stop sharing my screen. I think that maybe would deal with that. There we go. Cause I am getting to the end. I don't think I'm going to have more things to show. We can just talk X86 architecture class. I programmed on, uh, on mainframes too, Main, mainframe assembly language. That was something. I remember, so in case you're wondering, I'm about to be 61 and I started programming in high school and got a, um, the second semester of my senior year, I worked as a computer operator on IBM 370, 135 maybe, the night shift at a hospital. So I had two classes in the morning, uh, then I would sleep, and then I would go to work from midnight to, to eight. And then after I graduated from high school, I got a job at Merchants National Bank in Indianapolis, Indiana, and I've been programming professionally since then. Oh, wow. The chats.
Hey, Laura Gray had a comment, took a course in the semi language a long time ago, uh, but then the memory board <laughs> board caught on fire. <laughs> yeah, could have been a fan, or it could have been she was just really bad at that time. <laughs> <laughs> The memory board catching on fire. Wow. <laughs> I used to, uh, recently I played around, around with electronics a little bit and like the Raspberry Pis and Arduinos and things like that. The Raspberry Pi doesn't have an analog to digital converter. So there's a separate chip for that. And I wired one up wrong and I had it on the breadboard and I thought something's wrong here. And for some reason I had this just impulse to touch it. And it was hot. It was super hot. You wouldn't believe it. Uh, I, I, I had a blister. It wasn't a third degree burn or anything. But and then I, when it cooled, I removed it, and it had melted part of the breadboard, the plastic mm. breadboard that it was mounted on. Hackers should be required reading. Yes, yeah, Stephen Levy's book, right, Kevin? Yeah, I love that book. That was just uh, like magical to me. Stephen Levy, he's known now for a book on uh, Facebook, which I have not looked at. Uh, Brandon has a link to the Raspberry Pi 4 Ultimate Kit. Has a nice breadboard to Pi connector. Breadboard to Pi connector. Oh, yeah, I think I bought one of those separately so that your breadboard just becomes... Um, connected to it without having to run individual wires from the, the pins. Oh, just in the last minute, I'll show you guys something I made. I'll, I'll just put the link in because I'm not uh, sharing it anymore. Um, speaking of Raspberry Pi, or I guess you would say Raspberry Pis, plural. Um, the picture there at this GitHub repository shows my homemade smart thermostat. I love the idea of the, the Google Nest or whatever those other ones are, but I don't like the idea of information about what's going on in my house going else, going out to other companies. Um, so I made my own. And um, hmm. it allows me to have a schedule and it shows the... Um, temperature uh, over time and it gets the outdoor temperature from the nearest uh, airport, which is in Concord, California. And that's in Python. So there's a web app in Python using Flask. If any of you use that Python web app framework. Okay, so I've got um, by your time 229.17. So I'm going to say I'm glad I could fill in this was great fun being with everybody and i hope people will uh, get in touch send me some students that'd be nice <laughs> and so uh, Sababu, great uh, sharing the stage with you oh thank you big thumbs up to you uh as stated before so really appreciate you um we have some other sessions that are going to be going on as well and they will begin at 2 45 so we appreciate all of you all uh, that got a chance to stick around um, and share in, in this moment. So this is one of those kind of uh, unexpected moments, but you glad it happened. It was, you know, just <laughs> wonderful information. Um, just great. So it was fun. So appreciate that. Thank See y'all later. You. All right. So long, everybody. Don't forget, fill out the attendance form um, so we can send you the link for um the our presenter um the, I'm gonna do the other presenter <laughs> yeah, mr <laughs> Henriksen. so all right is that the okay yeah is let me post it again just in case i gotta scroll up oh actually i didn't copy and paste mm -hmm.
Okay, so the attendance form is at the bottom. So appreciate that. All right, I'm leaving. See you later. Thank you for coming.